In the last episode of season two, I'm preparing the van for travel to Alaska. I've teamed up with Gordon White from Edge Van Works to complete some major modifications like an e-guard to protect the underhood generator, a grill guard, and a swing away spare tire hitch, and more. So stay tuned to see all of the modifications that I did and get you caught up on all my travels from Texas to Utah before I hit the road to Alaska. Hey there story chasers. If you're new to my channel, my name is Amber and I create videos on traveling in my class B RV. Uh, that's her behind me, her name is Addie. And today I'm over in Reno, Nevada. So had a ton of van mods that I just got through accomplishing and I was all in California doing that from Southern California to Northern California. I came over to a good friend's house to get some work done on my van and they set me up in their house so I can do some work and get my van work done and my back has been hurting me so I got a shower, laundry, a bed, I tell you I have some pretty amazing friends. Very kind and very generous and I'm filled with so much gratitude. Really? Are you filled with gratitude? So I'm over here at Sam's house with the plumbing issue. You can see he's got his hands deep in the thick of the issue. The particle filter actually does have a small little hairline crack in it. So Sam is fashioning a whole new plumbing system for me. All right, so I was hoping that this process would be a little easier for, I suppose, the average person. So this is what the tubing looks like now without the particle filter. That's going, and I do see a drip. It's dripping from the particle filter. And we'll just use an actual external filter from now on. All right, so now it's all fixed. The cover is back on, and we'll just move everything back into place. So uh, you may just have to put some extra tubing in there if you do have an issue with yours. Take out the particle filter and use an external filter. After getting my plumbing fixed, I headed out to one of my favorite places in California, which is Dana Point, for some sun, some ocean, meeting up with some great friends. I really, really love Southern California. It kind of felt like coming home in this weird way. The climate in Southern California is moderate, which appeals to my desire to chase this 70 degree weather, which I don't always do. I feel like in the last year I've ran into some crazy weather patterns and I haven't been able to really feel that 70 degrees, especially this last winter. While here, I also completed some cosmetic van modifications, but I'm gonna show you that in an upcoming video. As much as I'd love to stay in Southern California, it is time to leave and head to the Bay Area to complete the remainder of the van modifications and prepare for my Alaska road trip. So of course, I'm not taking the most direct route I'm sticking to the scenic Pacific Coast Highway, north through Big Sur, Monterey, and Carmel. This is a beautiful, beautiful stretch of highway that I frequently travel on, and you can actually see my Pacific Coast Highway trip all the way from Washington to Southern California up here. That's one of the other reasons I really love my van. I cherish these scenic routes and being able to stop in small spaces and to sightsee, so having a van that's nimble makes it really, really convenient. I actually stayed in Carmel for three nights and I hung out in the Pacific Grove area during the day. Um, on this particular day, I saw a poor baby seal dying while I was there and I didn't want to show that on the video as it was traumatic enough to see in person. Um, he looked diseased and it seemed to be his time. And while I realized death is a part of life, it's still nevertheless difficult to watch, especially with how much compassion I have for animals. Lily and I strolled the walkways above the ocean during the day and I worked until it was time to leave. Then I headed north again to the Bay Area and showed up at Gordon White's shop called Vanworks bright and early to get a list of items taken care of before the Alaska road trip. Gordon has already installed the e-guard to protect the underhood generator back in January. The Heimer plastic piece covers up what, what you have and most of you have probably seen it, but this is what's hanging down under there. Gordon has all of the e-guards he brought with him to our quartzite meetup and he's been so gracious to do all of these installs here for everybody at our meetup, our Heimer meetup we're doing. So this is going to help protect our underhood generator. I'm going to give a shout out to Fit RV that helped lead the charge on the Ram Pro Masters. They were the pioneers. So how many iterations of this did you guys go through before you finalized this one? About five. James, thank you. 
the, the first thing we have to do is take off the factory plastic piece. Okay. So Heimer puts a uh, this plastic cover and uh, we need to take that off and uh, modify it a little bit and get it out of the way so that we can install the steel panel and then the modified version of this goes back on. So the plastic shroud is coming off. There's your underhood generator and all of it's uh, exposed. You can see where I busted it up right here by hitting it. What does the underside look like? Yep. See, that's why we're getting this. So these are the two things we like to look at whenever we get one of these opened up. Mm -hmm. the, the, Wires. the belt here yeah. and the hose. So some people have had issues where the belt will come in contact with this hose okay. and actually cut it open. They've done a, a far uh, better job on everything I've seen here. There is no chance of contact. Okay, good. And then these, 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 oh, this harness for the alternator on some, some of these installations is in contact with that plastic piece and I've seen it actually rub through. Uh, yours is perfect. Uh, the, the one we just did. Oh, the wires through. are good? Y yeah, yours oh, hasn't, good. hasn't been chafed at all. Looking good. Perfect. So now it was time to install a laundry list of items. One was the grill guard, two, the custom swing away spare tire hitch just for the Heimer vans. Three, I wanna move the Balmer up from the bottom to the top under the hood to prevent corrosion. Four, we wanna reprogram the solar controller. Five, there was a hole that we needed to plug that was somewhere under the refrigerator that was causing a draft inside the van. And six, I needed to get my oil changed. I literally cannot say enough about Gordon. He has risen up to the challenge and completely helped our orphaned Heimer community. His customer service is off the charts amazing. I mean, he came all the way out to the Heimer meetup in Quartzsite to install over 25 e-guards for all of us because we really needed that protection to our underhood generators and volt start which was compromised because of the plastic shroud that Heimer had installed that didn't really protect the underhood generator. I've had my e-guard on since January and I feel so much better about traveling to places like BLM or National Forest Roads where it's a little rougher and chances of accidentally damaging components is a lot greater. So now that I have the e-guard, I don't worry about that anymore. I'm completely protected and I feel more confident even when pulling into a parking spot nose in. The other item that Gordon customized for our van is the swing away spare tire hitch. This actually solves the problem of having to lift that 75 pound mount and tire and utilizes the existing secondary hitch receiver. It has a simple lever to unlock the arm. Then you pull up the knob to release the arm and pull the tire out. You can see that you won't be able to fully open the door against the side of the van as you previously could have, but that is a very small sacrifice that I'm willing to accept to be able to carry a spare tire and still be able to access my back doors all the time. Now I can actually carry a spare tire with ease, which I wanted to make sure I had before my Alaska trip. So if you have a Heimer or any kind of van, make sure you click the link in the description or the pen to comment for Gordon's information. He works closely with all of us to come up with solutions to our needs. And again, I highly, highly recommend him. The last of my modifications took place at another Heimer owner's house in the Bay Area. We installed a bug screen to keep bugs out of the radiator a foam window seal to keep dirt and dust from coming through the back doors. And a side note, I'm still not sure why that's happening and I need to address this with Ram, but it's happening on other Heimers as well. And an ultra gauge to digitally monitor the engine temperature instead of relying on the analog system, which we have discovered may or may not work. So I'm trying to avoid any accidental issues. Matt and Terrell, a huge thank you for your invitation and helping me out with these mods. Well, all of my van mods have pretty much come to an end. I'm still over here in the Bay Area of California, 
and I've had an amazing time here. I've had so many people who have helped me out. Oh my gosh, I've been able to mood shock at two different places, but I think I'm finally ready for Alaska. Yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I got everything done and I'm gonna actually put a video out that shows all of the features and modifications and things that I have changed on my van. That should be coming out here shortly, so stay tuned for that one. I'm excited, I'm actually going to be planning my Alaska trip here soon. I'm doing one more thing, I need to get my oil changed, and then after that, I'm headed to Salt Lake City. We got love that will never need to hide. Love will always rise above. Whatever comes, you will be just fine If I am yours and you are mine Take my hand and let's fly away hey Guys, let me tell you, I have not been by myself since December, I think. Um, or not been in cities. So, not been in cities and not been by myself. And I am the true classic introvert where I really need to have that alone time to recharge. And I wanted to get back into nature and can you see behind me? It's a beautiful mountains, yay! Ah, I love it here. So last night I got here into the Reno, Nevada area. I'm just west of it. And I came through the um, Tahoe Forest Mountain Range, I think is what it's called. And I, I'm at actually at a Cabela, so it's not like I'm, I'm in a parking lot. I stayed here overnight. But just being surrounded by all of this beauty and the nature and knowing that for the next week I'm actually going to head out to some BLM land between um, here and Utah. Oh, it just felt so refreshing and uh, really much needed for my soul. I needed to recharge a lot. There's a lot of things that I need to do also to prepare for my Alaska trip. So I have a lot of work ahead of me but I wanted to just hang out and oh gosh, go do some meditations and some walks around. Uh, BLM land so the feeling is incredible. I cannot wait to get out there. I'm headed there today to um, Winnemucca, I think so uh, We'll see the reviews look pretty good on it, and I think that the place has a good internet service um, If it's just spotty, it's not too bad because um, a lot of stuff I'm doing doesn't really require the internet So I'll live without it for a couple of days. It's probably gonna be good for my soul So uh, this is definitely a gratitude moment. Look at those mountains beautiful. I love it. I'm so glad to be here. of crickets. They're called Mormon crickets. These things are all over the road. Like everywhere. All of that black right there is not dirt. Those are crickets. Everywhere. actually by my rig eating lunch and I saw all of these like crickets walking by my van tons of them and I was like what is going on it was the weirdest thing so I came out here and saw all these crickets everywhere it's like I can't believe it there's just a ton of them and this guy stopped because he saw me like looking at them and I was like I think he thought something was wrong and so I asked him like what is all this and he told me they're Mormon crickets I'll have to go look it up. But my internet is not doing so well right now. Got a little bit to get a cell signal so I can make calls, but uh, no real like looking things up a lot. But it's beautiful here. This is um, in Winnemucca, Nevada. So the first couple of days I was here, I uh, literally slept a little bit, meditated, and just enjoyed the area. It's so beautiful. You can see you've got a little bit of snow up on the mountains over here still, but there's a river. Do you kind of hear it? There is a river down here. Look at them, check it out. Oh my God, they're everywhere. <laughs> I cannot believe this. 
I can't step anywhere without maybe stepping on them. I kind of like to go down to the river, but I don't want to step on all of them. Come on, go, 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 go. But look at these trees, so beautiful. And they've got these rocks over here that I've been meditating on in the mornings. You can actually only camp here for three days before you have to leave. Um, and this is at the Water Canyon Recreation. It is considered BLM. It's free, there's nothing you have to do to sign up. I think there's about 10, maybe 14 spots, but they do have pit toilets, which was nice, so I could dump my tank, which I really needed. <laughs> also, they have trash, which is really nice, so it's just uh, south of the town of Winnemucca, off of 80 in Nevada, and um, if you've ever been on 80, you'll know that it's kind of a weird drive. Not a lot in between, can be a little bit dreary, but it's a beautiful landscapes in a lot of places. All right, so I just showed you all of those Mormon crickets and they're actually climbing my vehicle right now. So um, I'm a little creeped out. <laughs> I don't think I want to stay here. It is ridiculous how many there are out there. They're like all over the rocks. They're, they've invaded this whole area. There's probably hundreds upon thousands of Mormon crickets over here. And I was reading about it. Guess what? Highest concentration in the West, Winnemucca, Nevada, right where I'm at. <laughs> So I'm going to head off to some other BLM land. I know there's some more uh, going east on 80. Um, I just don't know where exactly because I can't get a good strong signal. So when I get into the town of Winnemucca, I'll uh, check the internet then and figure out where we're going to stay for the night. But yeah, it's kind of crazy. Look at that. They're just swarming everywhere. Beautiful morning out here. We got out here yesterday. What's going on, girl? So, those Mormon crickets were no joke. Holy cow, they were all over the place. So, uh, I'm glad I came out here. Yesterday was about 73 degrees. It wasn't bad. But um, it was very, very windy. And you can kind of hear probably the wind a little bit right now, maybe. It's beautiful out here. I'm in the Bonneville Salt Flats area. And Oh my god, it's Utah. Just got into Utah from Nevada, but beautiful, beautiful scenery. You can see the mountains off in the distance. Right over there, I have another RVer. Well, I'm headed out to Salt Lake City, and interestingly, I was just here exactly one year ago at the same time, just after purchasing my Heimer Acta van. I can't even believe that it's been one year and already two years since I started RVing full time. I love this life, like absolutely love it and have no desire to quit anytime soon. The road, the scenery, and the friends and relationships that I've made along the way really, really fuels my soul. I can't believe this is also the end of season two, and this video is the 52nd episode. Season three starts in one week, and I'll also be traveling to Alaska for the summer season, so I'm very, very excited for this new leg of my journey. Now make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified when I have new videos and live streams each week. And I'll see you soon in season three.